Let's learn using Modo how to create such a hexagonal um, shelf or pattern like this one or this one. And uh, in real life we can use um, an inspiration like this. Um, so first make sure that all of your Modo is set up well. So this is checked. You've got the road traction to know. You see all of those tabs by clicking here and you're in model. If this is all good, we can start working. So there's different approach to do this. One approach, you could actually grab a cube, shift A to frame it, uh, click here or zero to go full screen. And um, you could actually bevel. So if you go in edge or press two to be in edge mode, select those, shift click to select those. You could press the B, so now it's edge bevel, drag anywhere and look, you could get that shape. So I think it'll be 250 mil because it's a one meter cube. And instead of having round level the fillet, right now it's doing a fillet. We want a chamfer, you put zero. And that's one way of doing it. Uh, you might think, how do I do the hole? You can do Boolean, but you can also just select those two. B, so now you're doing a bevel face with like an extrude face. Scale this. A bit more. Q to drop. And then you can just do a bridge. Make sure segment is at zero. Click anywhere to apply. And voila. If you want to adjust the depth, you can select in polygon by pressing 3. Press L to select the loop. W and you just move it where you want. Now in the photo I showed you there was a nice little bevel here. So L, B again. Draw that in like this. They had some sort of a cool feature like this. And then Q, R to scale. And you can scale on two axes, you see. Bring it here, and then W to move. Voila, and you get pretty much the same effect. So that is one way of doing it. Um, another way is to use snapping. Uh, I actually don't snap that often, but it, it could be quite useful. So snapping is here. You could just click to turn it on. Uh, another better way is X. X, turn it on and off. You don't want to keep it on. You only want it on when you need it. Now, to go into the option, you can press F11. And by default, this is usually turn off the grid. Or you press Alt and you click. So Alt, click or F11. You only do this once. I usually like to turn grid because often you want to snap to the grid. And then it's very easy. X, X to turn it off. So now we could basically use a new layer. If you don't have one, you press N to create a new layer. And we can use the pen. And if you zoom out in or zoom in enough, we could use the... Um, I'll use the front view actually to do this. And we can use the grid to help us out. So you could go uh, pen, X, and as you can tell now the snapping is on. And we could go halfway here, halfway here, uh, and draw it like this. I'm just going fast. I'm not counting. Yeah, I don't think I did it exactly right, but you get the point Q. And now you have this. So this is actually a face. X to turn off snapping. Polygon of three. B and you have the same result. Delete, and you can do the, the chamfer I just did, and when you're done, thicken, click to apply, move it, or back. So that's a second way. Uh, I actually like this way, but I like to trace, and it's okay if things are not perfectly uh, aligned. So um, I, uh, I'm just gonna draw uh, according to a photo, so I'll go Add item, uh, sorry, here. Backdrop item and image. 
and I'll give it an image, add load. And uh, you could use this one, you could use this, it doesn't really matter. So open. Um, this is a, actually I could even use both to show you. This is a, a JPEG, you could move it, you could make it a bit transparent if you want. Uh, you could choose which view, here I want front. But look, you could bring a second one here. And if the second one is a PNG, you will get the transparency. You see it's a PNG. So that's pretty neat too, to trace. You could also bring it from Illustrator. Uh, as an AI curve or an EPS uh, or SVG too. I'll just keep this one. That's good enough for me. This one has a bit of a perspective, but uh, it should still work. So now I go N to get my new layer, pen. And like I was telling you, don't worry about being um, perfectly, uh, you know, for sure you don't want to be like this, but a little bit of a kink might even look better. Once again, we're doing uh, concept work here. So, a bit of mistake will be welcome. Q to drop. And now I have this here. It's hard to see because it's yellow. I can duplicate this, Control D, W, and move it, you see, to the next one. And I actually don't need the photo anymore, so I'll hide it so I can see better. And you can tell I, I was crooked a little bit, so maybe I could fix this, but for me it's not a big deal. If you want to fix this, you go in point or press 1, and you just uh, select this. I like to right-click, lasso rectangle. And then you middle-click to select, and you go W and you move it until it's flat. You see? Something like this. You just need a a good mouse here voilà. you could do the same here but go back to uh, object mode control d to duplicate w to move and then move it uh, somewhere here you see it's uh, my angle is off but that's nice it'll create a nice shadow i could also fix this but i'm not going to worry about that um, if you want to fix this you move this point halfway then the next one will match perfect uh, I could have actually, I forgot to do something. So just to show you, if you move this guy just to here, it would be much better. But the reason I came back is not this. I completely forgot to do something very important, is to make the whole all of this. So polygon, B. So make it quite wide, actually like that. Um, then we can go Q to drop. So using shift select the two, L, B again. You want to go inside, uh, sorry, you want to click on the red. Voila. Do something like this. Q, R, just use the blue, bring it to the edge. W, voila, that's kind of what they have on the photo. Now also on the photo I think they have this, you can double click or press L, shift double click, and uh, to extrude an edge, this is new, it's Z, Z, edge extend, click, then you can actually extrude that edge. Here we could have just moved it actually, we didn't even need to extrude, but it's fine, let's skip it. To close, P, P close, uh, and then you do need to delete that extra one. Uh, sorry, here we only want to close the inside, my bad. So we need to select from here. Uh, here we want to, cl we, uh, to close one, it's exactly what I show you, look. Uh, you click here and you go P. It works perfect. Here it's a bit more tricky because we don't really want to close. We want to close, we want to connect those two. So here we can select those two, shift click those two, and I think a bridge should do it. 
Voilà. Um, it doesn't really matter because we don't see the back, but I like to do things clean. So now we can duplicate it. We can go back here. Control D, move it. See, it's better, it's still not perfect, but it's fine. You don't have to click, and you can click anywhere it works. You don't have to click on the blue the whole time. Voila, something like this. Now, we can use array, and that's fine, or clone. Array is when you go to uh, two level. Uh, actually, we'll go two level. And you see here, it's two objects. So we can right click and go merge. So now we only have one. But array, when you start having many, many uh, objects, it can wait, it can, uh, it can be heavy. So I'm going to go X and Z2 and click. And you see here we get new object. And I'm just afraid that it might slow down the software. So in case, we're, instead we're going to go Alt. And when you go Alt, it creates instance. And instance array means that it does the same thing. But your new guys will be pink or purple light purple. That means that they weight nothing. They, it's like a point in space. But you can still move them and rotate, but if you change the point location, they'll change. They'll look at the master. Basically, this is good to use if you're not going to change them, and it's going to give you a lot of render speed. So you see, you can use those. Uh, you could type here, but you can just use those little uh, uh, widget to uh, close the offset. Once again, don't be perfect. A hair of light is great. Okay. Q. We could actually group the whole thing so we know which one it is. Control G. We can call that uh, orange. And uh, now I can duplic duplicate this one, Control D, and I can take it off. And I'm going to move those two underneath. And do the same. Alt, uh, Instance Array. Click anywhere to connect. Here we need to go the other way, so you can scale like this, or type minus. And we don't want four, we want two, one, two. Voila. Uh, let me look, Y and X, yeah. I don't know where my green went. Let me, re let me redo it, because I think something went wrong here. I think maybe I applied it. Voila. Alt. Instance array. Two and two, that's good. Here it should be minus two. And click. Don't know where the green went. Unless I picked the wrong axis. Yeah. Uh, because maybe this is local. I don't know why it's doing Z. Oh, sorry. X, Y. Not Z. That's why I don't see my green. So we go reverse. We go back. And it's actually on X, it's 4. Voila. Q. Uh, do the same here, select all of those guys, Control G, call that uh, purple or blue. So because they look at the master, you don't have to uh, color everything, you can just color this one, go M, call that orange, switch this to an orangey, I think I used that one in the video, in the, 
and uh, here we know that it's a little, it's four start to be a bit shiny I'll go two or three let's just go three do the same with the blue M I think the purple I made it myself I forgot exactly how, which color was it I had a bit more blue in it it was lighter. Yeah, it was more like this. Yeah, that's good. Uh, spec 3, that's good. Now, as you know, on both now, we have the, the shading. So we can go here, blue material, and here, as you know, uh, at least 4 mil everywhere for fillet. We've learned this, so I won't explain again. It does fit at random time. Now we do need the background because if I go here and go F8, it's not too too bad. But uh, we need the background and we need a better light than that one. So I'll select that light here. Right-click, change to Area Light. Area light, as we know, they are like soft boxes. They are much better light. They create very soft shadow. You scale it so it's much bigger. Because I must have drawn the the shelf huge. Um, yeah, three quarter or something like this. Let's do a test. And we need a floor. So here is a new way of doing a backdrop. Right click, primitive cube. In polygon, you can scale it huge. Why am I in polygon? So I don't have to freeze. I don't get any uh, number numbering. Really big. Uh, then Q. And then uh, you want to delete the front, so you can stay in polygon. Delete all of this, and you go delete on the keyboard. So you might think you lost, but you still have those. They are just facing the wrong way. So in polygon, you press F to flip them. F like flip. And now here is a trick. If you go edge here and go B and give a lot of edge round level, maybe 10, click and drag. That's how I do a quick backdrop, you see. And back in polygon, R, and scale it way more like this. I think it's pretty good. Q. I just need Q to go up. So move that up because the light is already in place. Yeah, something like that. And make sure it touched, because I think on the thumbnail I did, my floor was off a little bit. OK. So now we can do a render test, F8. And you see it looks much better. You see we get that very nice soft shadows. Um, like I said, the uh, model render is excellent. Look, I basically did no lighting at all, and it's already looked good. I'm looking for my W. Where is here? This, because it's touching. You can also type here. Look, if you really want to do it well, actually, you can just grab this, go Shift A to come close, and then look at the spacing. If you are one of those perfectionists like I am sometimes, and you could just try it. One point three. So it's not enough. One five, two. Oh, so more like four. Doesn't look like it's doing anything. Did I select it the right thing? Oh, hello. Look, I've got the wrong guy selected. So undo Control Z many times. Voila. You want to have. This is why it's good to name things. This one. So you can click here and name it Floor or Backdrop. That's the one you want. Uh, so let's try 12.8. 13 is too much, so 12.95. Yeah, that's good. Still a bit too much. Uh, not enough. Voila. Like this. I think that's exactly what I did in the preview. So if you want to save from here, you go here and uh, save. 
if not you go uh, and you can go option full render quality uh, you can also um, go here on final color output and um, you can actually um, add a hair vignette like 80 percent just a hair to darken a bit and the tone mapping 10 percent so we lose a little bit on the saturation if you the render is pretty good but if you want really to clean it up settings move this one to 0.3 and reflex and sample to 256 or 512 256 here and you all get a very nice render then you go render render and um, and you save it here as a JPEG or something like this.